welcome to Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. My name is Kelly and I'm a former wedding planner and blogger and I'm obsessed with weddings. If you're planning a wedding in Ireland, you're in the right place. You're going to learn the tried and tested methods to planning your dream wedding without the added stress. Think of this as your one-stop shop for everything to do with planning your wedding in Ireland. With me, your new wedding planning bestie and a cup of tea. This is Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. Well, hello, happy Wednesday, and welcome to Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. My name is Kelly, I'm your host, I'm your new wedding planning bestie, and today we're going to be covering something very practical. But before we get into today's episode, I have to tell you that last week's episode was really fun. It was all about wedding speeches, so whether you are getting married and delivering a speech at your own wedding, or you are the bestie of the couple, or the parents, or whoever you are, the siblings of the couple, and you're giving a speech, um, it's a fun episode. I gave lots of really practical tips, but I also ended by sharing how I started a speech at a wedding that I did for my best friend. I was her maid of honor and it was really fun. So if you want to hear how I did that, you can take a listen to last week's episode. It's episode 41. I will link it in the notes so that you can have a listen. But as for today, we're talking all about seating your guests. Now, if you picture your wedding and you picture the moment where you're enjoying your meal together, you're sitting you know, at your table and you've got your, your new spouse next to you, think about what's in front of you. Who's sitting on either side of you and your spouse? Where are your guests in relation to you? All of these things are really, really helpful because you need to actually put some plans in place to decide who sits where, where the tables will be, what shape the tables will be, how they will be laid out. And so I'm going to walk you through some really practical things that you can consider, which will help you to build your wedding table plan. Your very first thing that you need to do is you need to decide who's coming. Now, I know it sounds really obvious, but sometimes people get engaged and they start thinking about things that they don't need to worry about right now. So if that's you, if you're newly engaged, this isn't something you need to know now, but I'm so happy you're listening because you're going you're gonna to want to come back to this in a few months time. You're going to want to bookmark this so that when you do plan out your wedding table plan, you know exactly what to do. So you're informing yourself early and I think that's really, really good. Something that I don't want you to do is to get stressed about the details when you haven't yet decided who's even coming to your wedding. So I'm going to drop a note with a link to our wedding planning checklist. So that will help you decide, you know, which decisions you need to make at which point in the wedding planning journey. But when it comes down to creating your table plan, you need to have first invited your guests and you need to have received your RSVPs so you know exactly who's going to be in the room. So it depends a little bit on what RSVP date you've given. What we did for our wedding was we we actually asked guests to RSVP and choose their meal at the same time. And um, so as we created our seating plan, we actually gave a version of the seating plan to our, our wedding venue team, which said, you know, this guest is sitting at this table in this position and this is the meal that they've ordered. It was a bit more straightforward for us because we had two really long banquet style tables. So it was quite easy to just kind of make it as a list. If you've got lots of different shaped tables and, you know, different, um, different formats, it's, you'd find a different way to communicate that information. But because we were getting meal orders at the same time, we basically asked guests to RSVP two weeks before the wedding day. And that gave us enough time to know exactly who would be there, what they were ordering. We could put it all together and we sent it off to the wedding venue team and they knew what they needed to do with that. So give yourself enough time to collect RSVPs. And then once you know exactly who's in the room, you can begin the next part of the process which is considering your table shapes. Now, the size and the shape of your table will determine how many people can sit around it. So it's definitely worth talking to your venue to see what they typically do. They can show you photos and you can have a bit of input from them because they know what works in the venue. Now, of course, if you've decided that you're going to hire a marquee and you're going to bring in a whole lot of tables, things will be a little bit different for you because you'd be making those decisions on your own. But the idea here is to choose which shape of table you want and what fits best in the room based on how many guests you have and how many guests you can have seated at each table. So round tables are the traditional ones. They give you more leg room. They're a lot bigger, so you would have bigger centerpieces in the middle. And typically, if they are bigger round tables, the people sitting opposite each other can often not communicate directly. 
Whereas if you have square or rectangular tables, they're often a little bit smaller, so it's less legroom, but people will be closer to each other and it's great for chatting. So consider your, uh, your priorities, if it's more aesthetic, if you've got fewer guests in quite a big space, then maybe having bigger round tables can actually fill the space really well. Or if you're trying to be really strategic with space because you're trying to really cram everybody in, but you don't want to feel like you're cramming them in, then square or rectangular tables could be your best bet, again, depending depending on the layout of your venue. So now the next thing is to think about who you want close to you. Who do you want sitting at your table? And there are a few different options here. Your first option is you could have what's called a sweetheart table, where that's just you and your partner only. It's called a sweetheart table because you guys are sweethearts and you don't have anybody else with you. It's a really special way to enjoy the moment together when perhaps the rest of the day is quite full on and you're just with loads of people all the time. But while you're eating, you want to be just the two of you. That's one option. The next option is to have a few VIP guests at your table. Typically, that is your parents. Things get a bit complicated if parents are divorced and remarried and you've got relationships with, you know, both Um, new partners, Um, there's also siblings, there's a wedding party. It all, again, depends on the size of the table and if you're seated in such a way that you are facing everyone. Um, And so one option is to have, you know, you guys as the couple, your parents on on either side, and then depending on how long the table is, you could then also have your best man and maid of honor, perhaps having their partners as well. Again, depends how long the table is. But what people tend to do is to have that head table be facing everybody. So you wouldn't have anyone on the other side looking back at you. You would have all your guests and you'd be sitting on the one side of the table and the other side is often reserved for really beautiful flowers and other decor. So that is one one way to do things. What we did for ours is we had those two banquet style tables that I mentioned before. And so we just made sure that we were sitting um, in the middle of one of those tables and we structured in such a way that the way that the venue laid out was on the one wall, there was this really beautiful big door and they had these amazing like kind of autumn leaves around the door frame. And um, we sat ourselves in such a way that we were right in front of that door. It wasn't an active door that opened and closed. And so it was basically just a really beautiful backdrop for us. So consider your surroundings, consider who you want around you, and that will help you to build your head table if you are going to have one. The next thing you can do is to consider everybody else. So I always recommend arranging people by groups. So think about your school friends, your work friends, your partner's work friends. You could have friends from church. You could have friends of parents. There's different categories of people. And I definitely don't suggest that you only seat people in that way. But I always recommend having each guest know at least one other person that's sitting near them. Now things get a little bit tricky if you're having, um, you know, lots of individual guests who don't know people and perhaps don't have a plus one. But for the most part, seat people with someone that they know. And if you can seat them in friendship groups, that's always helpful because then, you know, they're going to have a great time because they're with people that they know and love and they'll feel really, really comfortable and relaxed. There may be some politics involved. So if you have friends that perhaps have a history with each other, maybe they dated and broke up and you want them both at the wedding, find strategic ways to have them not right next to each other and split the friendship group a little bit so that, um, you know, they each have people that they know and love, but they're not with each other. So it's all very strategic, but think about the groups of people and how you can seat them. My advice is when it comes to the singles table, you should get rid of it. I've said this many times on the podcast. Nobody wants a singles table. It just draws attention to the fact that someone is single. And the only reason that you're putting these people together is that they don't have a partner. And that's kind of weird. Um, There are lots of ways that you can group people together. And that's just not one of them. My recommendation is to put your single friends with people that they already know or people that you think that they would get along really well with if they don't know lots of people. In terms of kids, if you are planning on having kids at your wedding, my recommendation is to have a kids table. So for guests who are a bit more dependent on their parents, perhaps, you know, younger children who are still being breastfed, for example, you probably want to keep those children with their parents. But for the slightly older children who are a bit more dependent, they're walking, they're playing with each other, they could have activity packs, that kind of thing. You could create a kid's table for them, but don't keep it too far away from the parents. So have the parents of those children nearby so they can kind of keep an eye on the kids during the dinner. But um, it's always fun having a kid's table. They always enjoy it. And excuse me, you can always have 
some kind of fun activity for them, like coloring books or bubbles or some kind of fun things that the kids can do because they'll always love that. And they feel super special having their own table. Now, I've mentioned before, considering the shape of your tables, but you also want to think about the layout of the venue. Now, my my expert tip here is to get the advice of your wedding venue team. So they know exactly how many guests that they can fit in their venue based on the table sizes and shapes and how they lay them out. So it's always a good thing to have a conversation with your wedding venue team to see what they recommend. And then you can work together on how you actually end up setting everything up. But here are some helpful tips that your wedding venue can't necessarily help you with. Um, You know your guests better than anyone else. So if you have older guests, like gran and grandpa, anyone like that who perhaps doesn't want to have loud music in their ears, those are the guests that you should have a little bit further away from the DJ table. So if there's going to be any music playing during the dinner or, or even later at night when guests, with some of the guests may still want to be seated for a while, don't have those guests too close to the DJ table and speakers. But if you have any guests who are visually impaired or hard of hearing and you're having any kind of sign language person um, or you're going to have you know any special things for those guests with special needs, those people should probably be closer to where the speeches will happen so they can actually have a clear view and they can see what they need to see. You also want to consider things like guests with wheelchairs. Will they have uh, the access to the different exits that they need based on where you're wanting to seat them? So have a chat with your wedding venue to see what they recommend for those special guests. And then, of course, there are some fun things like if you want to have um, dancing at your wedding and you know that you've got a particular group of friends who will be the first on the dance floor, seat them in such a way that they're really close to the dance floor and they can actually help get that party started by being really close to the action and getting straight on the dance floor, inspiring everyone else to do the same. The next item on your list is to map out a seating chart. So now this is different to a table plan and we'll get to the table plan next. The seating chart is really your kind of rough plan of where you want people to sit and it doesn't need to look pretty. It's more functional and it's more for you. Um, What I recommend doing is having a map of the venue, make it to scale and have a kind of drawing of what the tables are. So what I did was my, my husband and I, we just got two like really big pieces of paper and we just decided like on this table, we need to have X amount of people on this side and X amount of people on this side. I don't remember what the numbers were, but it was probably something like, you know, we had like a hundred and something people on our venue. So it was probably like, you know, we need to have like 25 people on this side of this big table, 25 people on this side. 25 people on this side of this table and 25 people on this side. So that added up to about 100. And um, so what we did was we took little stickers and we just like we put everyone's names on the stickers and we just kind of moved them around. So you can use things like sticky notes or you could do something digital if you want to, but it doesn't need to be pretty. It's more for you to just get a feel for where people are sitting and you could put this group of people here and you could go, actually, now that we have this many people, let's move this one here and you want to be able to kind of move it around quickly and easily and then once you've settled on where everyone is sitting you can move to the final step which is your table plan. Now something that I'm going to suggest to you when it comes to mapping out a seating chart and working on a table plan you do have a couple of options. So your first option is you can tell people where they're sitting in terms of like this is your table and this is your seat. Um, That is the traditional way. And the pro of that is people walk into the venue and they just go where they need to go and they sit where they need to sit. And you can kind of have a handle on where people are and you can make sure that, you know, you're keeping the politics in mind because, you know, we mentioned if people have a history, there's a strategic way you can seat them. Um, The other option is you can assign tables but not seats. And so you say, hey, these six people will be at this table, but they can sit wherever they want at that table. Whatever you decide will determine how you proceed with your table plan because your table plan will either demonstrate to people exactly where they're sitting or it could be a list of different tables. So table one, these are all the people at table one. Table two, these are all the people at table two. And your guests will see... Your guests will see the table plan and they will then go to that table and find their seat. Your table plan is what's more well designed and you would get a professional to help you design that because that's what you're going to display at your wedding. As guests walk into the reception hall, they will look at the table plan. It's a map of the venue. It tells you what's happening, where they're sitting. It just helps to keep everything in control. It eliminates the chaos of people just walking in and not knowing where to go. 
typically when you try something risky, like unassigned seating, where it's literally just tables and people can go wherever they want to go, I don't recommend that because what ends up happening is partners and families can get split up because they walk in and there's like one table, there's one seat left here and one seat left on the other side of the building. So I recommend either assigned seating or assigned tables. Those are two really great options and they can help to keep everything in charge. So I'm going to give a quick recap of what we've decided today. So when it comes to deciding where everyone's going to sit at your wedding, first, understand who's coming. Have a clear handle on who has RSVP'd yes before you begin. Otherwise, you could be working on who's sitting where with guests who might not even be there. Next, think about your table shapes. You've got rectangle, you've got square, you've got round. They all have different perks based on what you are trying to achieve. Think about who you want close to you. That's your head table if you're having one. Who do you want there? What can you do? Then arrange guests by groups. We spoke about church friends, uni friends, school friends, work friends, you know, all your different friendship groups, friends of the family, group them together. And that's one way to start when it comes to piecing together who sits at which table. Ditch the singles table, have a great kids table, but keep it close to the parents. Think about your venue layout, then begin mapping out your seating chart and then get the the professionals to help you with a beautiful table plan. Well, thank you for listening today. The Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online podcast is produced by me, Kelly, and mixed, mastered, and edited by Glenn Hartman. For more wedding planning tips, advice, checklists, and more, visit weddingsonline.ie.